Hi, I'm Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the Velvet Mobius Ear Warmer, which you can see me modeling right here for you. Now, I'm wearing the women's size, but this pattern does include six sizes from babies to adult men. That said, it doesn't have a lot of negative ease. It's a little bit loose to fit over the hair. If you want to wear it under the hair or you like a little bit tighter fit, I suggest you actually go down a size. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to make the Velvet Mobius Ear Warmer. The Velvet Mobius Ear Warmer is made using Bernat Velvet. You'll need 30 yards for the smallest size, up to 75 yards for the largest. We're also using a USK 6.5 millimeter crochet hook or whatever gets you gauge. You'll also need your standard crochet supplies of scissors, a yarn needle, and for this pattern, it's really helpful to have a stitch marker. Let's get started. The Velvet Mobius Ear Warmer starts with a num different number of stitches depending on the size you're making. The great thing is it doesn't really matter exactly what that stitch is, and by which I mean there's not a specific stitch multiple, it's just the number of stitches that best fit around your head. So if you'd like to make a custom size, make this first section of round one and then try it on, and you can adjust from there for tightness. Let's go ahead and begin. We're going to start by making foundation half double crochets. So I've got the slip, slip knot on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and chain one. Then we'll yarn over again and insert our hook into the back of that very first chain we made. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And that chain that we just made, that loop we just pulled up right there, closest to our hook, that one is going to be the chain at the bottom of our first half double crochet. Foundation half double crochet, we make both at once. So now we yarn over and pull a loop through just that first loop on the hook. So we still have three loops on the hook. Now we yarn over and pull through all three loops to finish our first foundation half double crochet. Now before we continue, go ahead and put your stitch marker right in the top of that first stitch. And if you have a second stitch marker handy, go ahead and put it in the bottom. If you only have one, put it in the top. There we go. Then we're going to go ahead and continue some more foundation half double crochets. Again, the total number of stitches will just depend on what size you're making. To continue, we yarn over, and now we're going to insert our hook under the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we've got three loops on our hook. We want to yarn over and pull through just the first one to create the chain at the bottom. Then we yarn over and pull through all three to finish our stitch. All the rest of the foundation half double crochets are made just like this. We'll make one more together, but I know it's a little difficult to see on this fuzzy yarn, so I do have a tutorial on the foundation half double crochet in my YouTube channel if you'd like to watch that. I went under the two loops there at the bottom of the previous stitch, pulled up a loop, yarn over and pull through one, then yarn over and pull through all three. And continue with this until you have the number of stitches for the first half of round one. For instance, for the smallest size, it will be 38, and for the largest, it will be 57. So as I say, you're going to want to continue making foundation half double crochets until it's long enough to fit around your head or till you've got as many recommended for the size you're making in the pattern. Then we're going to join in a circle. We're not done with round one yet. We've just made the circumference, but we're actually going to work into each of these stitches before we're done with round one. So in an, it's unusual in crochet patterns, but Mobius's work a little differently in that round one will actually go around your project twice. So to do that, normally we would lay out our work like this and then just bring the first end over here. So we make sure we wanna lay it out so you don't get a twist and then pull it up and usually we would slip stitch to that first stitch or maybe would work right into it if we were working a spiral. However, because this is a Mobius, we are going to flip this stitch over, just like that. See, now there is a twist in our, in our stitching here, in our round. Now what we're going to do is crochet, a half double crochet into the bottom of each one of those stitches we just made. So let's do that again. I'm gonna lay this out really nice and flat here. Let me get my working yarn out of the way a little bit. There we go. So this is the row we just made. You can tell here's that little tail. This is the top of that very first stitch we made. This is the bottom of that first stitch we made. 
This is the last stitch I made. So I've turned it over so that I can join it together. But before I do that, I'm gonna bring it over this way and then flip it over to crochet into the bottom of that first stitch. So these are gonna be half double crochets. So let's get our yarn sort of rearranged here. Try to get so much out of the way. It's too much out of the way. All right. So we're going to yarn over, lay out our stitches, find that first one we made, bring it over as if to join in the round. There's that tail. Now we're going to flip it over and half double crochet in the bottom of that very first half double crochet we made. When we do that now, we want to go ahead and we can take out that stitch marker from the bottom of the stitch where we just crocheted. Now we are going to continue to half double crochet in each stitch around. So there was the first one, we go to the next one. This is the bottom of the second stitch we made. Now obviously my little sample here is quite a bit smaller than even the baby size. This is more of a large baby doll size, but you really can make this pattern with any number of stitches. So it's very easy to customize for size. You can definitely pick a number in between the sizes given if needed. So you can see here, I'm just working a half double crochet into the bottom of each of those stitches. And this is one of the great things about using the foundation half double crochet. Not only is it a very stretchy stitch, which is a great way to begin something like an ear warmer where you wanna have a little bit of stretch to it, but it also gives us this really great bottom of each stitch to work into. So we're just going to continue to half double crochet in each one of these stitches around. We wanna make sure that even though it's round one, you can see it's really made up of two rounds. It's just the way a Mobius works. There we go. Make sure we get into each one of these stitches. And the great thing is while later in the stitch pattern we will need a multiple of two, that's why it doesn't matter how many stitches you make at the beginning of it because we're going to work into the bottom of each one and it will automatically double it. So we'll always end up with an even number of stitches once we've worked into the bottom of each of these stitches as well. And that's really all we need for this pattern. So we're working our way around here. Now I have gotten to the bottom of that very last stitch I made. You can kind of tell everything's a little crazy right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and crochet into the bottom of that last one. And now we bring that flipped down. This is the top of the stitch there that we had flipped over. Now we bring it right back up. And now we can slip stitch right in the top of that stitch. So let's look at that one more time before we do that here. We've half double crocheted in the base of each of those stitches. You can see there's where we started crocheting into the base. So now we're ready to slip stitch and finish round one, but we need to flip this right back over so that we can slip stitch to the top of the very first stitch we made, where we left that very first stitch marker. There we go, just gotta get right in there. And then you will have finished round one. And you can see it's correct. If you hold it out, you can see the back's flat here, and it's got just one twist in it right there. After that, you're ready to begin round two. But that will explain why, if you look at it, it says foundation half double crochet, as I say, anywhere between 38 and 57 stitches, but at the end of the round, you're gonna have anywhere from 76 to 114. You will have doubled your stitch count, but the circumference is only that first set of numbers. Now we're ready for round two. And as we continue through the powder pattern, we want to move that first stitch marker up to the first stitch of each new round. That'll really help us keep track. So to begin round two, we'll start with a chain one, and then we're going to front loop only half double crochet in the first stitch. So let's go ahead and move our stitch marker out of the way for a moment and take a look at the top of that first stitch there. Again, this is a little bit harder to see in the velvet, so there is a separate tutorial for this on the YouTube channel if you'd like to see it. But we want to look at the two loops on the top of each stitch, sort of that little V that they make if you look at them that way. The one that's closest to us is the front loop, and the one that's furthest away is the back loop. It's always relative to you, the crocheter. So in the first stitch, we want to half double crochet under just the front loop. So we're going to insert our hook under just the front loop of that stitch there. It's the first one, so it's a little bit tight. 
so that that back loop isn't used. Go ahead and pull up our stitch here and make that first half double crochet. We do want to work a little bit tighter with velvet. Um, it can be a little tricky and the tighter you work your stitches, the better results you'll have. So now we've got that first stitch marked and now we can continue. For the next stitch, we want to back loop only half double crochet. So we yarn over and now we want to insert our hook sort of in between those two loops at the top so that it goes under just the back loop. We still want to move our hook away from us like we normally do. We don't ever come, well, for these stitches, we don't come from behind. So we still go the same direction. You just only catch one of the loops on your hook. So there is our back loop only half double crochet. You can use, see the unused front loop there in front. So then we begin our repeat that takes us all the way around. Front loop only half double crochet in the next stitch. Back loop, loop only, half double crochet in the next stitch. Front loop, then back loop, front loop, then back loop all the way around. Now, because of the nature of a Mobius, you will be going all the way around this twice before you come back to that stitch marker. So let's work a little bit more together and then we'll come back as we finish up that last round. Front loop, back loop. Let's get under there, front loop, and back loop. All right, and I'll see you as we get closer to finishing up round two. Now I've gotten about halfway around round two. I can tell because I've come back to that little gap right there. Don't worry about it, we're just going to cross right on over it. Work into one stitch, find the bottom of that next stitch, and make whatever stitch it is in order. It might be a front loop, it might be a back loop, it's just going to depend on how many stitches you started out with, whether it was an even number or an odd number. But at this point, you'll definitely have an even number. So just keep on stitching. You can see I began right down there. We've gone all the way around and we want to keep on going until we come back to that stitch marker. So now I've gone all the way around the Mobius again and it's brought us right back to that stitch with a stitch marker, the first stitch we made in this round. We still have our one little twist in there and we've got that initial tail end, but we're gonna take care of that later. For now, we can go ahead and join with a slip stitch to that very first stitch we made for round two. So you can see now how even though it's only round two, it's really four rows tall or thick, if you will. So now we're ready for round three, which will be the last round if you are making the baby, toddler, or child version. If you're making the teen, woman, or men sizes, then you'll repeat this round twice, just to make it a little bit wider. For the smaller sizes, we don't wanna to get too wide. For the bigger sizes, we want a little more width. But rounds three and four will be the same. Again, just depending on which size you'd like to make. To begin round three, we chain one, and we're going to front post double crochet around the first stitch. So we've got our first stitch marked here. We're gonna go ahead, yarn over, come in on one side of the stitch from the front, since it's a front post, and come out the other side here. So we can see our hook went around the back of the stitch and comes out on the other side. Again, if you'd like to see a clearer tutorial without such fuzzy yarn, I do have a separate tutorial for this on the Moogly YouTube channel. So now we've got our, stick, our hook inserted. So we're going to yarn over and pull a loop right up behind that stitch. Now we've still got our three loops on our hook, the active loop, the yarn over, and the one we just pulled up through the stitch. So we just treat it like a regular double crochet from here. We yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two to finish. Up net, oh, before we forget though, we wanna make sure, since it's the first stitch of our round, to put that stitch marker right back in, especially with the Mobius traveling all the way around. Super helpful to have that stitch marker. Now we're ready for our second stitch. And our second stitch is going to be a back post double crochet. So we yarn over. Now we're going to come from behind our work. This is what makes it a back post. We come from behind, come up still on the side, go across the front of the stitch, and now we pop the hook back out on the back of the fabric. So you can see what that looks like from back there. And that's what it looks like from the front. So we're going to yarn over and pull that loop through. Now back post double crochets, it can be a little trickier to pull that yarn up and through. So go ahead and take your time. With these um, chenille style yarns or velvet style yarns, it's good to give a little extra tug really to pull that loop through as well. 
Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Then we do those two stitches again all the way around. That's our repeat. So let's do a few of those together. Front post double crochet around the next stitch. Back post double crochet around the next. Front post double crochet around the next. And back post double crochet around the one after that. And we'll continue that all the way around until we get back to that stitch marker. So we've worked our way all the way around back to that stitch marker and you can see we've got those post stitches on both sides of the Mobius. So we know we've gone all the way around. And this is it. This is all the sizes, all the rows rather, for the smallest three sizes. For the largest three sizes, we would go ahead, join with a slip stitch, chain one, and then do that all again. Front post double crochet around each front post double crochet, back post double crochet around each back post double crochet. But for our little sample here, we're going to say we're making one of the smaller sizes, since it is obviously quite small and already quite thick for this circumference. So what we want to do, rather than joining with a slip stitch, is we're going to go ahead and cut our yarn about six inches or so left there to weave in. Then go ahead and pull up on that loop and grab that yarn needle. Let's get it on our yarn needle here. And what we want to do is a really nice seamless join. Since this is something we're going to be wearing on our head, which is typically sort of a sensitive zone, we want to eliminate as many knots as possible. And this join is a little bit smoother and you don't have that little pull through hard knot that sometimes you can get with these projects. So what we're going to do with our yarn end on our needle here, we've still got that first stitch marked. We can go ahead and join to that one or you can join to the next one if you want to doesn't really matter for this project. So we're going to go ahead and just join to that one with a stitch marker, the first one. Then we can pull that right on through. And let's go ahead and pull that up nice and tight. Then we go right back down to that last stitch we made right in the middle in between that front and back loop. Pull it up nice and tight and then you're ready to weave in that end. There's one end left though, the one that we started with in the very beginning. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a gap right there. We don't have it in the other sections, just in between sort of that first and second half of row one. That's not a problem. That's what this end is gonna do a little extra double duty. We're not just going to weave it in, we're going to put it to use first. So we take that very first end, the very first tail, and let's just snag a couple stitches from the other side before we come back to this side. And just like that, it's all closed up. And then we can weave in our end just as we normally would. But you can see, if we get all those little ends out of the way, we've created a great twist in our tiny little Velvet Mobius Ear Warmer. And that's how to crochet the Velvet Mobius Ear Warmer, which is a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com with the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.